You're on 3 WTAR-TV. Time now for Becky and a look at people, places, and things. Now, Livas. Well, Peter Coe is in the kitchen making something that I think I can eat on my diet, and broiled chicken tarragon he's making. And uh, we're going to talk about Don't Drink the Water, that's at Tidewater Dinner Theater now. But before that, we're going to meet Slim Carmichael, the man who flew the first United Airlines plane into Norfolk 40 years ago. And I think it's 40 years ago tomorrow. 40 years ago tomorrow. We'll be back with him in just a moment. My guest now is J.H. Slim Carmichael. He's the man who flew the first United Airlines plane. At that time, it was part of Pennsylvania Central Airlines into Norfolk uh, on April 7, 1938. 40 years ago tomorrow. Where were you coming from? Came from Washington, which at that time was the easternmost terminal of Capitol's operation. Mm -hmm. And we were fortunate to be awarded the extension to Norfolk, which then tied Norfolk into the system going on west to Chicago. As capital merged into United, of course, it then tied it into United's network. And as I'm sure you know, United is the largest of the free world airlines. Oh. So Norfolk is literally tied into uh, every important business center in the United States. Wonder why I can't get anywhere I want to get. No, I want to. <laughs> We still, have some, yeah, we still have some problems getting out of Norfolk sometimes, but um, let's explain what happens with the airlines, because at that time there were several small airlines, and so all of the big companies that we know today, you were telling me, are of course mergers of all of these small ones. They're the result of mergers, yes. Mm -hmm. and actually, there were four or five principal routes, the three transcontinental routes, and then some uh, primary feeder structure routes in the earlier days of the airlines. And then, as is the course in business, the, the more profitable companies were able to merge with or acquire the smaller ones and, and build networks. And probably uh, United represents the, the finest in the, in the United States, purely and simply because of its basic route structure, the cities it serves. And even though you may have a little trouble occasionally getting out of Norfolk, you get to go an awful lot of places. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. How was it? You had started in the 20s in aviation. What was it like flying commercial airlines? Uh, you probably had experimented with all kinds of planes, but when you got into that commercial thing and you knew that there were many other lives in your hands, I think there were 10 people on that first flight, how did you feel about that? Well, back in the 20s, of course, we didn't have the problem of, of passengers, unquote. Passengers are not a problem, but at least uh, we would flew uh, uh, by ourselves uh, in the mail planes. We had carried no passengers. And it wasn't until the 30s that we began to get airplanes that would carry passengers, too. By the time we got the Boeing 247B, which was the airplane we inaugurated service here in Norfolk with, uh, we thought we had the biggest airplane and by far the fastest and the most powerful that had ever be built. And we carried 10 passengers and uh, thought that was about as many as should go in airplanes. You know? That's right. We never dreamed that it would develop into what it was, what it has become. Yeah. And yet at the same time, the development has been a very logical thing, uh, built on basically very sound grounds. And uh, safety, of course, is the primary factor involved in any airline operation, and it's a remarkably safe, convenient way to travel. Yeah. 